everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name's Zach Hancock, I'm an evolutionary biologist and currently a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Michigan. My research focuses on population genetics, phylogenetics, and genome evolution. Uh, specifically, we convert theoretical results from population genetics into statistical models that empiricists can use to test their own data against. On this channel, I do some evolution education with an emphasis in pop gen. Um, I also do some like pseudoscience debunking, and I dabble in a bit of invertebrate systematics. What I wanted to do in this video is to give everyone an update on what's going to be happening on the channel over the upcoming summer months. Summer is a very busy time for me, as I'm going to be doing field work, as well as presenting at a few conferences. Because of this, content on this channel will likely slow down a bit. But with that said, uh, I have something big in the works that I want to share with you all. Let's start off with a bit of background so that you have an idea for the inspiration for this upcoming project. So, in the United States, almost half of the population rejects evolution. Um, this trend is especially evident among conservative Republicans with only 25% acceptance and is strongly predicted by religiosity. Age is also a strong predictor with uh, like 68% of people aged 18 to 24 accepting evolution, indicating that older Americans are strongly biasing this trend with only 45% acceptance for people over the age of 55. This perceived animosity is likely driven in some part by the most vocal evolutionary biologists, such as Richard Dawkins and Jerry Coyne, who also happen to be atheist activists. Clearly, religion is a major factor driving a wedge between the public's acceptance of evolution as an idea um, because it is perceived as a threat to traditional morality and religious values. I am not a theologian, and it would be irresponsible for me to try to explain to individuals how they can accept evolutionary biology and still retain their faith. That's a personal issue that you must grapple with. All I can do is help you understand the science. But a second important factor in the acceptance of evolution that I can better address is the public's perception of science, and in particular, scientists. A striking result from the Pew Research Center in 2014 found that the public appeared wholly confused on the scientific consensus about human evolution. For example, of those who said humans were created instead of evolved, nearly half thought that scientists felt the same way. More broadly, since the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, public support for scientists, and especially medical scientists, has dropped precipitously. A new research poll in 2022 found that general support for scientists had fallen 10% from April 2020 to December 2021. For Republican-leaning voters, the rate fell over 22% over that time. While Americans generally support basic science funding and trust scientists, there are several factors that continue to drive a large portion of the public to reject the scientific method or be skeptical of the motivations of individual researchers that existed prior to the pandemic. For example, while there is a partisan divide at higher scientific knowledge bases, when individuals had low scientific knowledge, there was virtually a 50-50 split between both Republicans and Democrats over whether the scientific method can be used to produce any conclusion the researcher wants. In addition, the public generally trusted practitioners more than researchers. For example, 57% of respondents stated that medical doctors cared about the best interest of the patient, whereas only 35% thought that that was true for medical researchers. However, this same survey reported that when the surveyors were asked how likely they were to trust the research, 57% said that they were more likely to trust it when the data was openly available to the public. Emerging from this is the importance of visibility in evolutionary biology. Within the field itself, researchers are moving towards an open access platform and publicly available data, but this is not widely known or appreciated among the public. It's visible to other researchers, but not to everyone else. Furthermore, while our data is more open, we aren't. 
Many university places may be perceived as hostile to differing perspectives, uh, especially differing cultural and religious ideals, uh, and therefore unwelcoming. In many respects, these components have driven the science communication movement. It's fundamentally an effort to communicate science to the general public in a welcoming and inclusive way. This has been done with great success in the fields of wildlife biology and ecology, but evolutionary biology remains more obscure, and it shoulders a greater ideological burden than other fields of biology. How do we bridge this gap? For me, there is this basic problem that, si that the scientific process seems mystical to the public. What we do is done behind closed doors, you know, in secret labs that no one can enter without proper identification. Our methods and data seem downright arcane. Science has become so specialized that the average person just can't keep up with what's going on, and scientists have historically done little to help bridge this gap. Obviously, the greater problem in the public's perception of evolution than just openness is religiosity. As a scientist, like I said, I can't change your position if it's held due to religious conviction. We're not arguing about the same thing. If your foundation is that God did a thing and an alternative view is an insult to God, we don't really have much to talk about. But what I can do is try and demystify the scientific process, and that is what this upcoming project is going to do. I have recently received funding to begin a brand new study on the evolutionary genetics of beach moles. These are ubiquitous crustaceans that are found on sandy beaches all across the northern hemisphere. In this project, I will be collecting these critters from southern Florida all the way to the St. Lawrence in Canada. I'm then going to take hundreds of samples into the lab and sequence their DNA, and I'm going to use those sequences to understand a range of ecological and evolutionary processes that have shaped these fascinating little crustaceans. After we've analyzed all the data, I'm going to write up the results and send it off to a scientific journal for peer review. How does any of this demystify science? Well, folks, you're coming along for the ride. I'm going to film for you the whole process in a documentary style, starting with the field work. You'll see all the locations I go to and how I collect the beach moles. From there, you'll learn how I process them in the lab, including how I prepare uh, them for DNA sequencing. You'll see how we analyze the DNA sequences statistically and get a feel for how scientific papers are constructed and written. Finally, you'll see how the peer review process works, including a first-hand look at what the reviewers have to say about the results and how we go about addressing the reviewers' concerns. The project will conclude with the published paper, the final product at the end of what may be a really long road. This is pretty uncharted territory for me. I haven't seen any other YouTube content or documentary like this, so I don't have a good intuition for how it will turn out in the end. Um, it could be incredibly boring and be way more work than what it's worth, but it will be an experience, and if anything else, it will tell you a little something about how science actually gets done instead of the cartoonish version you may have read or heard about. I'm setting out for my field work on May 1st, and likely will not be back until the end of May or the beginning of June. I might try to post some YouTube shorts um, along the way as sort of like teasers of what you can expect the final product to be like. If I'm lucky, I'll find some random people along the way to chat with, and maybe can get some of that on camera so that you can see the perspectives of people that I run into while I'm doing my field work. I'm really excited to get started with this project. I've wanted to do a large-scale sequencing study on beach moles for a really long time, but haven't been able to secure the funding. Now that I have it, I just have to share with you how it goes. Again, maybe it'll end up being terrible YouTube content. Who knows? At the very least, it will be, to my knowledge, the first fully open project posted to a public platform. And maybe it will inspire others to do the same, and in doing so, we'll make science more open and accessible to everyone. Thanks everyone for being here. Let me know in the comments if this sounds intriguing to you. Um, I know I didn't go into a lot of detail on the studies itself, but I don't want to spoil the details of the documentary. Well, I hope this video uh, sort of drums up support, 
Don't expect this to be done anytime soon. Uh, once I'm back from the field, I'll try to pick up with some semi-regular videos, uh, things that I typically do, but this specific documentary uh, is very likely to take many months to complete. Anyway, thanks for being here, and I'll see you guys in a month. Uh, hope you have a great summer.